Hello, my name is Gregory Osborne. I'm an instructor with XR Terra. And in this module, we're going to be talking about animations. We're going to do a brief introduction and we're going to show you how to make your first animation clip. So what is an animation? The animation is basically how to save as an asset a change in properties over time. Now, more traditionally, what we think of as properties that are worth animating are position, color, things that are maybe more complex, like facial expression and things like that. All of these are animated. There's different dimensions of animating. You can animate 2D characters with like images and sprites, or you can animate 3D objects. And for a lot of the 3D animation, the actual assets, like the models that you use uh, and animate will often be animated outside of Unity. So for example, in a free software like Maya, or Blender, but you can use Unity's built-in animation system to accomplish, uh, let's say, small tasks that, you know, animating how a character runs and walks would be difficult. But animating something to turn off and on or to move up and down or to perform short movements is uh, something that you don't have to outsource to a completely different program. You can do that from within Unity itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at how Unity actually handles animation in its animation system. So the most basic building block of any animation is going to be an animation clip. So this is the actual kind of clip that contains how the head moves, how the elbows move, how the color changes, all the properties that you want to change and edit over time. All of that information will be stored inside an animation clip. So for a character, you'll commonly have a walk animation, a standing idly animation, a running animation, a jumping animation. All of those would be clips. So you'd have a run clip, an idle clip, a walk clip, a jump clip. And the way that you actually handle transitions between these clips is using an animator controller asset. So all of these clips get held inside an animator controller asset. This is an asset that's stored in the product window. And in order to actually use that animator controller asset on a game object in the scene, we would assign a reference to the animator controller in an animator component. We would put an animator component onto the game object. It holds the animator controller asset which within it contains all the clips and how to transition between those clips and all the logic behind that. But today we're going to be focusing specifically on creating an animation clip within Unity. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go into Unity. I have a, an empty scene here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to animate a cube to move up and then down. That's going to be our introduction to animation clips in Unity. We're just gonna make a cube go up and down. So. Let's start with making our cube. I'm going to create for myself using the hierarchy plus button, a 3D object cube. This cube, um, just for the sake of seeing in the game window, I'm going to move it a little bit closer, I think, and maybe move it up even, just so we can see it against the background of the sky. So this cube is going to be animated. So I'm just gonna call this animated cube. And if I want to actually start adding an animation to this cube, I will need to access the animation window. To open the animation window, you go to Window, Animation, and then choose Animation. So Window, Animation, Animation. I open this up. It opens it up as its own kind of window. I like to sometimes drag it behind my project window. You can kind of put this wherever, as long as it's a nice horizontal section of your screen, because this timeline is generally more horizontal, so it's easier to have a horizontal window be your timeline editor. With our animated cube selected in the hierarchy, you'll see a message here that says to begin animating animated cube, create an animator and an animation clip. Um, and there's this nice button here that says create. So what this button will do is not only will it create an animation clip, well, it'll ask us to save an animation clip in our assets, but it'll also generate an animator controller asset, and it'll also automatically put an animator component onto our animated cube that holds the animated controller asset. Any game object that I select in the hierarchy will basically have this button available. So I could say to begin animating the main camera. And so to actually animate the main camera, if I select the directional light, I could do the same thing to the directional light. But we want to add an animation onto our animated cube. So I'm going to click on this button here. It says create. A window will pop up and it'll ask me where I want to save this animation clip. And, and also it will ask me to name the animation clip. I'm going to go ahead into my assets folder. I'm actually going to create for myself an animations folder. I generally like to keep my folder organized. And so this way I know whenever I'm looking for animations, I'll go into this folder. And I'm going to save this as 
cube up down because that's what it's going to do. We're going to have this cube go up and then we're going to have the cube go down. I'll hit enter or rather hit save. And you can see here now that I've actually created an animation clip for my cube, this timeline now looks different. We've got these kind of bars going down it. And over here, this drop down is telling me the name of my animation clip. And if I wanted to create another animation clip that looked different and did different things, I could click on this drop down here and select create new clip. And I could just create a new clip and I would be able to use that in the animator controller, but we're not going to get too deep into that. The first thing that we're going to try and do is we're going to try and animate this cube to move up. So an important part about animations is that basically anything that exists in the inspector and in the inspector on children of this game object is something that you can edit and animate through the animation window. I can animate whether the mesh render is turned on and off, the box collider has is trigger checked or not. I could probably animate the mesh that I'm using for rendering this object if I wanted to. But traditionally, one of the things that we end up doing the most is animating the position of our animated cube. Let's talk briefly about how animation used to work uh, back in the 20s when it was all illustrated. So in the 20s, when you were working for Disney, they would have one main animator and that main animator was a busy person. So what they would do is they would draw the key frames of action. So if you had like somebody jumping off a cliff, they would draw like the spring and then the jump like when they're all stretched out and then the kind of frame where they're falling down. And so they would draw these key frames and then they had a whole bunch of other animators working for the company that would then go in and draw all of the in-between frames. So you'd have one primary animator, the one who gets paid a lot, they draw the key frames and everyone else has to go and actually draw all the in-between frames. Thankfully, in the 21st century, we don't have to hire a bunch of people to draw those in-between frames. We can just have our computer do them for us. So the way that animation tends to work in 3D engines is I specify a keyframe, let's say at zero, and then I make another keyframe at 0, 030, and Unity will then do all of the in-between calculations for me for that property. So let's do that now. Let's create some keyframes for ourselves. When I click here in the timeline, this white bar that follows where my mouse is. And I have to click on the actual timeline itself. If I click around underneath it, it doesn't actually move the timeline bar. But if I click on the actual timeline, the white bar follows where my mouse is, is clicking and dragging. Where I put this bar determines where the changes I make in the inspector are going to be added as a keyframe. So I'm going to decide that at about half a second, um, this is 030, I'm going to create a new keyframe. The first and easiest way for us to set up a keyframe is using this red record button right here. This red record button, when I click on it, it turns my timeline red and any change that I make in the inspector to any property will automatically be added as a property that this animation clip controls. Right now, I don't have any properties that my animation clip controls, so Hitting play does nothing, nothing gets changed. But if I say want to add the position of my animated cube as a property that is controlled by my animation, I would click my cursor to somewhere halfway through and make a change to this position. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this so it moves up a little bit. And as soon as I drag it up, you'll see that this position property has turned red. That's basically letting me know that, hey, this animation clip has taken control of this property and it's now in charge of how it goes. So now because I made a change, by the way, <laughs> because I made a change in the inspector, it created a keyframe for me right here at 0, 030. But importantly, because I didn't have any keyframes here at the beginning, it actually made one for me. So if I click and scrub along this timeline, you can actually see that it created an initial position place for me. And then because my cursor was here at 0, 030, when I made a change, it added a keyframe here so that I can watch myself move this cube up and I'm probably going to want to move it down. But anything that I click while I'm in record mode, while this button is red, anything that I click, including say, checking or unchecking the mesh renderer. If I, you know, set is trigger, you can see now I have a whole bunch of extra properties that have been added here into my hierarchy of changes. So 
all of these I may right now, I guess I was at zero zero five. So it added some um, some keyframes here at zero zero five uh, for me turning on and disabling or enabling uh, the box collider or the mesh render. But thankfully, I can remove this if this was an accident. I can right click on it and I could say remove property. Right click on the uh, mesh render and remove that property. And we just go back to having our position being animated. So that's one way to make a change is, is just click somewhere on the timeline, make sure you're in record mode, and then make a change to the inspector. Another way is outside of record mode. If I want to be a little bit more careful and I would want to test things out, for example, let's say I want to make my cube go, I don't know, let's have it go swing to the left a little bit. Right now, you'll notice that instead of being red or blue, my position is brown. What that means is that if I was to click somewhere else on the timeline, these changes would be lost. Anything that's brown is something that like, this is different from the animation clip, but you haven't saved it to the animation clip. So as soon as I click someplace else, that cube snaps back to where the animation clip believes it should be at that point, right? As wherever I move my timeline, you know, the animation clip is in charge of this property because I have the animation open. And as soon as I make a change here, it's like, oh, this is different from what our animation clip says. It highlights it in brown. And if I want to make this a part of my animation, then I can make all the changes I want in the inspector. Once I've made all the changes in the inspector that I want, I go over to the animation window and I hover over this diamond button that has a plus sign next to it. And when you hover over, it says add keyframe. When I click on this add keyframe button, it creates a new keyframe for me here with all of the properties that I've set in the inspector changed as part of this keyframe. So now when I kind of play my animation, it'll go up and then kind of snap to the left, which is kind of an interesting motion. So we've created for ourselves a new keyframe here. And I think just for the sake of completion, let's make this thing move in a triangle. In order to get the starting position to be placed at the end of my animation clip, I can actually select these keyframes by clicking and dragging with the mouse. And when I let go, any keyframes that are inside this box will be highlighted blue. So let's say I want to highlight the very first keyframe. I can hit Control C to copy it. I don't think I can actually right click on it to do that. I think you have to select with the mouse and hit Control C. And then I can click on the mouse somewhere else on the timeline and I can hit Control V to paste that keyframe. And so now what should happen is throughout this animation, it basically moves up, it moves left, and then it returns to its original position because I basically just copied the initial condition as the final condition of the animation. Another thing that I can do when I select these animation keyframes is I can actually move them so that they stretch out for a, over a longer period of time or a shorter period of time. Right now, this is what the animation looks like. It has a, a, a weird little kind of jerk there. If I wanted to, I can actually select this keyframe and drag it over to the side to make it a little bit less of a jerk over to the side. I can also select all of these keyframes. And when I select multiple keyframes, I get these two blue bars that appear on the far edges of these keyframes. And when I hover my mouse over them, I get this arrow that points in left and right in both directions. So what I can do when I have this arrow is I can actually drag this out to stretch out how long these keyframes have between them. So I can make this whole animation last over the course of, I guess, three and a half seconds. Or if I wanted to, I can make it all happen within one second, real fast. Um, as much as I kind of want to, to kind of drag these around, oh my God, that's super fast. <laughs> Let's maybe make it, I, I don't know, I kind of like having it be at two seconds. I think that's a, a reasonable amount of time for this animation clip to happen. You may notice as we kind of move our cube around, uh, these keyframes were not animating linearly between them, right? We kind of like slow down as we approach the top and we slow down as we approach this area. Like every keyframe here, it kind of feels like we're smoothly moving into it. And that's actually part of what Unity does to your animation clip in order to make it look nicer when you're just kind of setting things up. So how does Unity control those curves of how fast the cube is moving between keyframes? Well. If you look at the bottom of the animation window, there's two sections. Right now, we're in the dope sheet. The dope sheet is where you can see all of these diamonds displayed on your timeline, and these diamonds kind of represent, here are the keyframes that your animation relies on. 
if I want to take a closer look at the actual curves that Unity is drawing for me between these keyframes, then I can select this section down here that says curves. And here you can actually see a visual representation of the curves that Unity is drawing for me. You can actually see the X, Y, and Z axes separated out here. So the Y axis is this green one. And you can see it's not linear. It actually has, like, you can see the slope at zero is flat, and then it kind of slowly increases. And as it approaches its top, it kind of flattens out. If I really, really wanted this to be like super linear and triangular, I can select any one of these keyframes and all of these little dots that I'm clicking on here represent keyframe positions. And each dot has these handles on it that I can use to define the slope through that position. So for example, if I wanted to like increase the slope so I can make this cube kind of overshoot where I had the keyframe and then come back down, I can actually grab one of these handles and drag it down. And you can see it's actually changing the slope through this line. And when I hit play, you'll see that this cube kind of shoots up way higher than it did before. And also that because the slope is so steep, it doesn't actually go directly left. It actually kind of gets bent back. But as I adjust this handle, it adjusts how the line goes through this point on the animation. And I can do something kind of similar with the x-axis if I want, and I can change the handles of like, you know, how hard it snaps back. So you can also double click on anywhere on this line, essentially to create a new keyframe. So I can make this thing wobble as it goes up instead of going up smoothly. And I, I can adjust things on my animation using this uh, curve section instead of using the dope sheet section. You can actually directly edit the values of these points. If I right click on this point, I can say edit key and I can actually directly input a value that I want at that location or at that point in time. I can say, in fact, not, not a value of 5.71. I want a value of uh, 20. And now I can see that my my animation now stretches all the way up to 20 instead of what it was before, which was like 5.5 or whatever. Now when I hit play, this cube really goes up <laughs> um, before it goes anywhere. Yeah, this, uh, you know, we can we can do some really fun stuff with this animation using curves or using the dope sheet in order to understand kind of how things are moving in our animation clip. So right now we have an interesting animation clip. That's going to be everything for this module on actually creating an animation clip. In the next couple of modules about animation, we're going to talk about how to actually transition between clips. And then later, for those who are into C Sharp, we'll talk about how to trigger animations and properties through code. But for now, this has been making an animation clip in Unity. We'll see you in the next modules. Thank you for watching.